don't take AK 47s. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold. Jesus was saying, the moment the Holy Ghost comes upon you, the kingdom is now taking over. So we operate by the Spirit of God. We are not fighting carnally, but we are taking over, we are legislating spiritually. The people who are the true rulers are the ones who are in charge in the Spirit. We are the ones who enthrone, we are the ones who dethrone. So right now, I want us to take uh, charge of the realm of the Spirit and the things that need to be aligned with the will of God all over the earth. The earth needs godly leaders the, 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 the whole in all in, the institutions need godly leadership and God has given us the authority to appoint and also to dethrone I want us to pray the sufferings in Africa, the suffering of his people in Africa has reached to his throne. It is a cry from inside that now it's time for us to make sure we take charge in the realm of the spirit. Dominion is ours. Dominion is ours. The rule is ours. How do we rule? If you look at Luke chapter 21, verse 15, the Bible says, I've given you wisdom, I've given you a mouth, and none of your adversaries will be able to stand against you. That means nothing shall resist us, even as we declare with our mouth. So the mouth is our weapon. We decree and speak the word of God. I want us to pray, uh, Your Excellencies. Just let's take a few minutes of prayer. I want all of us to just join up and begin to pray right now. God has given us authority. God has given us a mouth. Come on, let us release the fire of God. Let's take charge of all the leadership. Let's, let's bring the order of God. Let's, let's align our leadership in Africa, our leadership all over the world. The world belongs to God. The earth belongs to God. Let's, let's just call on God and leadership. Legislate the things the that we, we are, want to see and to see manifest. Even in this time of great awakening, we must see the rule of God all over from China to the US, South America, Africa. We must see the rule and dominion of God. Yes, Father, we thank you. None shall stand of God and uh, continue to oppress those people and oppressing them down. Oh God, we speak to the leadership of this people. We speak to the leadership of this people. We command the alignment. We command the realignment. Those who are supposed to be dethroned, let them be dethroned. Those who are supposed to ascend to power, let them ascend to power. Father, we thank you. Those who are opposing all forms of corruption of God, exposing all forms of oppression in Africa. And Lord, we are uprooting that which is not the plant of the Father. Let the planting of God by the God be ascend to power. In the name of Jesus, God, we do Oh, 
Father, thank you, Lord. The power to legislate is from the sons of God. It is the sons of God that legislate. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'd like to just introduce Apostle Quinton while we are in this flow without uh, uh, skipping our protocol. Apostle Quinton Kuberg is a part of GBR for a number of years. He is the founder and visionary of Rap Ministries for Quiggle Restoration what? and Refugee Center in Mahalis. Can we mute our mics, Your Excellency, please? Once, my love. Can we mute? Please mute. Thank you. Apostle Quinton, he houses and works 
with the Destitute and Abused Women and Children, runs a rehabilitation center. He is also a mentor to similar organizations. We welcome you, Your Excellency. Can, we, can I hand over to you? We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for being with us. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to go straight into speaking about empowerment for kingdom takeover in every sector of society. <clears throat> and so uh, if we can go to the next slide. Greetings, Your Excellencies. Greetings. I'm going to go to Psalms 110, verses 1 and 2. Psalms 110, verses 1 says, Thank you, Father, that you would use this word right now, Father, to bring revelation. Jesus. And even, oh, Father, God, Lord, to just help us to know how to apply your will in and through our lives and even, oh, God, in every sector of society, Father, that we, oh, Father, God, Lord, will be empowered to rule and have dominion the way you intended for it to be before the foundations of the earth. Psalms 110, verse 1 says the following. It says, the Lord said unto my Lord. Now, when it says the Lord said, the Lord that it's speaking of there really comes from the name Jehovah, the covenant keeping, covenant making God. And so this speaks of the God that has the last say in everything. That Lord says unto my Lord, and this is really speaking of Jesus Christ, who is known as Adonai, our master, because he purchased us with his precious blood. And so <clears throat> Jehovah says to Jesus, sit at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. And so what this is saying here is, is that God is saying, Jesus, you went and you accomplished and you did what you had to do. Uh, you did a completed work on the cross. And now what we need to do is we need to see the manifestation of that completed work in, in, in the natural, on the earth. We need to see that being made manifest. You've already done it. It's a done deal. In the spirit realm, you have redeemed, you have conquered, you have conquered every kingdom on this earth. And you've done that through your obedience. And so he's saying, now, I'm saying to you, Sit at my right hand, and the right hand is that position of authority, that position of ruling and reigning. And he says, sit at my right hand until, not if, but until. So it's definitely going to happen. Where the enemies, the foes, the adversaries of the Almighty God becomes the footstool. And so he says, sit at my right hand until, in my place of favor, until I make your enemies uh, thy footstool. And, and verse 2 comes and says the following. The Lord shall send a rod of strength out of Zion. Now, understand, if God is saying, Jesus must sit at his right hand until he makes... Um, all enemies, his footstool, how will the manifestation of what Jesus accomplished on the cross take place? How will the manifestation of God's kingdom come and rule over every, every other kingdom on the earth? When we talk, when we talk God talking what it is that is supposed to happen, it, it, it goes beyond just the world, but it goes, it goes to the earth all of creation. How, how will that happen if Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father in that position of ruling and reigning? How will it happen? And, and he says, until, you know, they become the footstool. How will this happen? And verse 2 basically expounds on that. He says, the Lord, and this is speaking of Jehovah again, shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. So what he's saying is, is that out of, out of the place called Zion, that prophetic uh, symbolism 
of ruling and reigning. That's the place known as Zion. That's the place that anyone who receives what Jesus did for us and, and, and really commits and surrenders to him, they experience operating out of this place called Zion, the holy mountain, the place of ruling and reigning. And so he says, you know what? I'm going to send uh, the rod of thy strength. So he's really saying that when I, when I allow the Holy Spirit to go and, and be imparted into each and every one of God's children, known as the saints, it's then that they receive the ability. It's then that they see, receive the grace and the ability and everything it is that they need through the Holy Spirit to rule in the midst of the enemies. Now, if you look at that word rod, it, it's taken from the word matei mata, which really means it's a branch that, that does a, a number of things. It's a branch that chastens, that brings correction. It's, it's a branch or a rod that is used to rule. It's a scepter. It's that that speaks of the authority given. It's that that speaks of uh, uh, the power and the authority given to rule and reign. It also speaks of, if you speak of a rod, it describes a lance, which speaks of a javelin, which speaks of something that you can launch as a weapon. It also speaks of, a rod speaks of that that basically one uses to lean on when you're walking for support. And so God is saying really that all that is in with Jesus, I'm going to take all of that and in the Holy Spirit that I sent to be imparted to the saints who are in heaven that must make manifest the kingdom of God ruling over every other kingdom on this earth. I'm going to give them all it is that they need. I'm going to give them that that's needed to bring correction and chastening, which means to bring accuracy out of inaccuracy on the earth in every mountain of society, which means I'm going to give the grace and the ability, the wisdom, the gifts of the spirit, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the mighty acts that the saints on the earth need to go and fulfill the extended ministry of Jesus Christ on the earth so that the kingdom of God can rule over every kingdom on this earth, over the kingdom of the spiritual, over the kingdom of family, over the kingdom of education, politics, media, arts, science, and technology. And, 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 and God is really saying here, he's saying in verse 2, that through them you will rule. So understand that Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father in the heavenly place called heaven. And he's retained there because Acts 3.20 says that Jesus must be retained in heaven until the restoration, the restitution of all things as spoken by the mouths of the prophets of God from the beginning. So until that happens, Jesus is retained. But with Jesus being retained in heaven, who becomes the arms, the legs, the mouth, the voice. Who becomes that for Jesus on the earth? It's you and I as saints. You and I as children of the Most High God. But you and I can only come to that place of ruling and reigning if we align our lives to come to the place where we're always operating out of our position in heavenly places. Seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Ruling and reigning with him. Only when we come to that place can we see the manifestation of the Spirit of Jesus working through us all that needs to be done to make manifest what Jesus already accomplished. And that is the kingdom of God ruling and reigning over any other kingdom on this earth. Amen. Excellency, Amen. You, you have five and, minutes. And to end off, Obadiah 117 says the following. It says, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, uh, and there there will be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So the only way we're going to possess the possessions that was rightfully given to us through Jesus Christ 
is we are going to have to come to the place of deliverance. We're going to have to be set free Amen. from every mindset, every thought, every motive that has to do with any kingdom on this earth. And we're going to have to have deliverance and be set free and come to the mind and the heart and the passion and the heart of Jesus to the place where we strive towards holiness. We strive towards being aligned with his word and doing everything in accordance with accuracy that comes from his word and his will. And then we will possess, we will be used by him to possess every mountain. We'll possess the spiritual, the family, the education, the politics, the media, the arts, the science, and technology. We will possess, and that word possess is taken from the word Yaresh, Yaresh, which means we will occupy by driving out previous tenants, and we will possess in their place. So any tenants sent from the devil, any tenants, uh, any tenants with uh, demonic influences that are possessing the, uh, the, the church, that are possessing family, that are possessing education, politics, media, arts, science, and technology, we will drive them out from those places, from those mountains. And we will possess those places. And we will seize what they have, and we will expel them, and we will dispossess them. And in that way, the kingdom of God will rule over every other kingdom throughout this earth. Amen. So we're going to pray. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that even as we align our lives to your will, even as we come to the place of Father God, Lord, where we, oh Father God, Lord, surrender our lives, we receive our deliverance, we come into the place of accuracy, we come into the place of building on the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus is the chief God of stone, and we submit ourselves to you as the head, Father God, Lord, and even so, Father God, Lord, we will come and we will possess every mountain. We are possessing the spiritual mountain, we are possessing the church, we are possessing the mountain of family, we are possessing the mountain of education, politics, media, arts, science, and technology for you and for your kingdom. We are taking back ground from the devil and his, and his cohorts. We are taking it back right now for the kingdom in Jesus' name. We are your We are We are taking back what is ours. We are taking back what has been given to us through the cross. We are taking back what has been given to us. Yes. Jesus Christ, but we have been given the power of attorney. attorney. Yes. Thank you, best. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Almighty God, that every mountain of this world is ours, oh God. It's ours for the kingdom of God. We thank you that we are seeing the manifestation of the restoration of all things as spoken by the mouth of the prophet of God, even from the beginning of time. In Jesus' name, we see the manifestation of the perfect will of God. We see the seven, what does we call the throne room of God coming together with the seven churches uh, representing the church universal coming together and forming that new creation generation that takes over for the kingdom of God here on this earth. In Jesus' name, we declare miracles, signs, wonders, supernatural acts, oh God. For your word says, Behold, I and the children of the Lord are given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwell in Mount Zion. Thank you, Lord, and we're ruling and reigning from our position in Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Excellencies, read what's going on in the chat. While we're busy, there's some word coming through there. Um, uh, His Excellency uh, uh, Apostle Joseph saw an angel who was pouring fresh water that looked like gold. He saw the water had cleansed so many of GBR. Adonai is pouring refreshing water upon <laughs> GBR. This water is also giving fresh life. And Adonai says it will touch the nations. The angel is holding a gold bowl with pure water. 
uh, at one stage when we were praying with His Excellency Apostle Becky, I, my whole body began to go into a, like a lightning, as if I felt that I felt the lightnings of God hitting my body, uh, and uh, uh, it was like a vibration that moved through my body. Hallelujah! The power of God released through the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Glory! Woo! I'm excited. Glory. Um, <laughs> and there's some more there on the side in the chat. Thank you so much, Apostle Quentin. You know, it's like we are on the runway and we're just taking off. And we are in the air. And when these sessions finish, I actually can't contain myself, I must tell you. So we glorify you, Father. We love you, Lord. We're going to, we experienced a taste today of the legislative ability of the sons of God according to the priesthood of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. I can't hear you, but I hear you. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much. Glory. I want to thank our panelists. Hallelujah. I want to thank our Hallelujah. Children. Hallelujah. We want to, I want to thank you, Excellency Quinton, Becky, and Oyabanji for leading us today. I want to thank God for the river of life that flows through you. And today we were able to converge with you. We, uh, Apostle Joseph is going to take us into a quick breaking of bread. And then we're going to sign off with the blowing of the shofar. And I want to thank every single person for participating today. It has been and these sessions. It's like we plug into the electrical circuit of heaven and you can get a download if you plug in. Uh, 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 I felt it today. I feel it every week. Uh, and I want to encourage you because where there's a flow of life, you will get healed. Your situation will change. Your families will get saved. There will be a transference of divine power. Apostle Joseph, over to you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I'm just going to, um, I hope we all have our elements. We're taking it from uh, Genesis 14, when Meshizadek, the king of Salem, brought bread and wine. Wine. Now, in some way, <laughs> my brother said wine. I know. So, in, in, in Psalm 105, uh, we read the following. He says, and wine that makes the heart of men glad, but bread that strengthen man's heart. We know your heart is your spirit. So God wants, and through that priesthood, the order of mercy is that he strengthens our hearts and he makes our hearts glad. We rejoice. Yeah, and the glory is our strength. So let us partake <laughs> of the bread of life, the bread that is strength. That is our Lord Jesus whose body was broken for us. That gives us strength. Let us Amen. Partake. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's Glory. drink of the wine. Glory. The wine that makes our hearts glad. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. Thank you, Your Excellency. Bless you. Hallelujah. Father, we glorify you now. We exalt you. We magnify you. We bless you. We thank you, Father, for the edification of your word and the upliftment and the empowerment of your Holy Spirit. Lord, today we thank you for divine alignment. We call all things that are out of alignment into alignment with your purposes and completely and totally connected into the throne which is before your face, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the blessing upon every home and family. And Lord, we sign out now with the blowing of the shofar. Glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
שלום, שלום. טוב, שלום. שלום, שלום.